Has this ever happened to you? You're trying to make a great art doll, and the skeleton, for whatever reason, just won't support the weight of the giant head? Yeah, I've, I've been here before, and it's really frustrating to try and get started and to, to try to make something where you just can't figure out a fundamental problem. In my opinion, the best way and the easiest way to fix the skeleton of an art doll that just won't stand up or is having difficulty supporting the weight is to find skeletons or references of musculature systems and skeletons and, and use them to be a basis for your internal works. Nature is the best thing to reference when you're trying to, well, when you're trying to make something like a natural animal. Notice how on these birds, they have a very large breastbone. This is something that I realized and decided, you know, I should add that to my design. It should probably help prevent it from slumping over, it would help to straighten out the back, and it would help to just kind of move all of the weight onto the back legs. Even if you're not making a real animal, so let's say for example you want to make a wyvern or a dragon, or something that has mythical or fantasy elements to it that wouldn't have a skeleton you can reference, I still recommend looking at real animal skeletons and trying to find ones that are very similar or at least somewhat close to the approximation of that creature in real life. That'll help you a lot, trust me. So the first really big problem that I realized with my design was that the back was clearly not reinforced enough. My frame would just kind of slump over and clearly wasn't supporting, supporting the uh, head or the front portion of the body. So I decided to use a piece of wire and I just kind of threaded it through uh, the wings that I had and attached it to the back legs so that the wire would help to pull the weight onto the back legs. My goal was to try and disperse as much of the weight, especially of the head, onto the back end of the animal as possible. You know, that way the feet can support it and it can kind of have a leaning posture, but not well, fall over and face plant into the ground. The next thing I decided to do was to add a breastbone. Uh, just like in the pictures that I showed you with the bird skeletons, breastbones are a very good addition to any sort of bipedal animal that kind of hunches over. So I was trying to distribute the weight, once again, all the way as far back as possible. Here I'm using some rocks to try and find a good counterbalance weight. Um, as you can see, this rock surprisingly, was able to be a perfect counterbalance. So you can see by testing with a counterbalance just how much you really need to add in order to keep it from falling over and kind of where the weak points are. I probably should have reinforced the legs a little bit since they're a little bit teetery, but for the most part, the skeleton seems to support the weight. It's really important to remember that the counterbalance that works right now wouldn't necessarily work once you've put all the fabric, the fur, the stuffing, and everything else onto your art doll. So what I'm doing right now is I'm making a small little counterbalance, or at least a clip for it, so that I can hook it onto the skeleton as I continue to work and as I add fur and, and fabric on top. In this way, I can basically gauge how much more I'm adding on to it. Eventually, you're going to need something quite a bit heavier than your original counterbalance to actually hold up your frame. So I will show you in a little bit exactly what I'm going to do in order to finalize a counterbalance that you can actually put inside of your art doll so that they'll always stand up. Before we can do that though, we need to know exactly how far away from the, uh, from the hips we need to actually put the counterbalance. So what I'm doing here is I'm just testing out by slowly moving our counterbalance further and further down in order to figure out exactly where it needs to be in order for it to, well, counterbalance 
the, the head and the weight of the frame. So once you can figure that out, then we'll move on to the next step. So as you can see here, I've added most of the fabric, feathers, etc. that I'm going to add onto the doll. And we still have the same issue. He falls flat on his face. So what I've, what I've done is I've left part of the back end unsewn. And this way I can continue to attach the little, uh, the little counterweight. You can see here that I haven't sewn it up completely. There's a little bit of his tail where the wire is exposed. This is really important because that's actually where we're going to attach the final weights to help hold them up. But as you can see, the same rock just isn't quite enough anymore. It's just not heavy enough to balance out all of those feathers and everything else too. So I was doing some digging and I was trying to think of something that would be very small and heavy that could fit perfectly inside of the tail of an art doll. The best thing I could come up with were lead weights that are used for fishing. So I'm putting on some gloves here. I don't think it's completely necessary, but I figured, you know, it's not particularly good for you to touch lead, although I'm not sure if there's much lead on the outside. I'm just wearing gloves just in case. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little weights. I got some gremlin weights. I don't know exactly how heavy they are, but they're pretty good. You can find them anywhere you, uh, any sort of sporting goods store, or even a Walmart. That's where I got mine. They look kind of like little metal eggs, so I suppose it's pretty fitting. So these are pretty heavy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pipe cleaner in order to kind of loop through all of them. And then once I do this, I'll have a, a good bundle of them that I can just kind of use and well, both hook onto the exposed wire, as well as once I've finished the art doll, I can just kind of insert them into the back and they can all kind of hold into one spot. This part's gonna be a lot of trial and error. And so you're gonna have to test to see multiple times if it's heavy enough, if it's too heavy. You're just gonna have to keep trying at it until you get the right number of weights for your art doll. Obviously the bigger your art doll, the more weights it's going to need, so just keep that in mind. Once you've found the right counterbalance weight, it's time to figure out a way to hide them inside of the art doll. Art dolls with long tails are particularly easy to hide them in because you can just kind of add a scrap of fabric over the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the pipe cleaner that holds all of the weights onto it, onto that little piece of wire that's exposed through the, the skin. And then what I'm going to do on top of that is I'm going to glue it onto the tail. So I'm going to glue the weights upwards so they don't just kind of dangle, because if they dangle then they unbalance it as they move around and you don't want that obviously. So here I'm going to show you how you can create the sort of a, the cover for the weights so you won't even know that they're even there. I always like to make a pattern before I cut some fabric just in case, uh, just in case I need to cut the piece again I can make sure that it's the same size. So what I'm doing here is just drawing out a basic sort of shape that will be the underside of the tail that will cover where we're going to put the weights. So once you've got your fabric cut out, then you're going to want to add your weights to the doll. I'm not ready to attach the weights officially yet, but I will show you where they're supposed to go. You just take the weights and add them where, where your counterbalance should be. Obviously, you'd want to attach it with the pipe cleaner. And then you just place your fabric over top. You can sew them, you can hot glue them, whatever works to cover up the weights, it's up to you. So yeah, that's how you will counterbalance your art doll. If you found this additional guide to be helpful, please let me know. 
If you haven't already, please leave a review for the class. It really helps me a lot and motivates me to continue making more videos like this. Until next time, thanks for watching.